Ooh, it looked like death. That'll do it. Right, evening all. Um, hope to finish this off in a couple of hours, I think. Um, had to think about the stuff that was really still left to do, whether I do it all or not, it's another matter. Um, I did have a realisation as to what my bug was with the player drift. He was, when you moved the frog, he wouldn't always line up with the things you jumped on, like the logs and stuff, he was out of sequence. I suddenly realised that the original game makes you wait till he's finished before letting you press the key again and so on. Um, whereas I just let you press, so you would actually start a new jump halfway through an old one. And that would get you out of sequence. So, um, we'll fix that first. I'm assuming you can all hear me as well. Um, and then once we've done that, I want to update the speed. We're actually running at 30 frames a second. That's just the default game maker. So I want to update it to 60, just so everything's nice and smooth. Um, I have also added, drawn a font. I'm assuming people don't want to sit and watch me draw pixels. Um, so I copied a lot of the text off of various images I found um, and I've made um, the font up. Um, seems to be right. I couldn't find a Q so certain letters I just made myself. Um, but it's basically I was just sitting drawing letters. So it's not something terribly interesting to... Um, thanks Pete. It's not something particularly interesting to sit and watch. Um, and I've also done some of the animations. Um, so, again, it's not terribly exciting to watch, so I didn't bother recording that. Usually when I start these, I, I like to try and have all the graphics there, so I'm just putting them in, because graphics really um, kind of soaks up the time when you're doing these things. Um, and it's really, it's like, it, the challenge is the coding rather than actually getting things, you know, drawing pixels, particularly because not everybody can draw pixels. So it's nice if you can just get the assets, put them in and then make them do things. So um, so we've got some animations, we've got fonts, and we've got a bug to fix. Um, so we shall start off by recapping as to where we were. Now the things will be animating just because um, when I change the sprite, I change the ones that were there, so th it just updates, basically. Um, they're going at uh, 4 frames per second. Uh, it's pretty much what the originals looked like. Um, so what we will do is we will replace one of these with one that dives. And we'll see how we cope with that. Effectively, if it's, if it's in one of the frames when he's dived and you jump on him, you'll, you'll be dead. Or we won't check that collision if he's within a certain frame and that's, that'll kill you. So that's pretty simple. We also have to do the time. I did play it a little bit. Um, here we go here. So I did play a little bit. Um, I noticed when... You got to the end. I'm just letting the timer run down a little bit. Then your time resets back. Um, you might get a bonus of that time left. I don't know. Uh, one, three, two, forty. Oh, I have no idea. I don't know what the scores are when, you, when that happens. I need to look it up. Um, that's not terribly important. Oop. Anyway, oh, I haven't done that animation for dying. It's not super important either. Uh, okay, so that's where we are. Um, first thing we'll do is fix this so that you can only jump once you finish jumping and that'll fix this alignment because you can see there it's out of alignment because I was jumping halfway through so we need to fix that first so anybody remember where that code was uh, kill player uh, test so that's probably in the player code there we go, if moving. So we don't want to let you do this if he's moving. No, oh, there we go, down here. So if not moving. So we can 
normally I want you to move, I'll do new input if you're not moving. And that should be all it is. So now, it also makes it a bit harder because you have to, you can't just skip away from something. You've got to kind of finish. I've got a feeling the original Frogger might have also had a tiny delay when you landed where you couldn't jump. And that was part of the difficulty as well. So you would jump, you would land, and then there'd be a tiny little pause. But that would just come down to playability. You would just add a timer or something um, to let them do it. So that's one thing fixed. So we can take that off the list. Next, I want to update it to 60 frames per second. So I don't know if you really see this on the stream. You know, they all kind of move, but they're not super smooth because it's going at 30. It doesn't really matter. Um, but the original game was 60. So let, let's make this 60 as well. Uh, in Game Maker, you do that in the game options. Here. Oops. I'm assuming that actually changed. Yes. Okay. No, it's not Unity, it's Game Maker. Um, now, let's see what we're going to do now. Uh, now, when everything moves, everything will be a lot quicker. A bit much smoother. I hope that kind of comes out, as you can kind of see it. Um, so what I need to do is go through everything, half all the speeds, to take them back to what the original speed was. But everything will now be nice and smooth. So it's all a bit fast now. Right, so let's go through all the different uh, baddies. Uh, we'll take we'll just half these. That's those. Now we need the cars. Like two five. Is that a one point two five? Don't have my calculator with me. Five point two. One point two five. It is. One point two five. Five two five. One. Zero point. Five and the truck. One point five. Now we also have to change the player. Hello, random person. Put some of these up. So now we will need the font, so we'll leave that open. Right. So that should be back to the same speed, but nice and smooth. Although the player is moving a bit quick now. Bloop. So now from memory we had a we don't have a movement table or something for the player. We did. So we want to stretch us out a little bit now. Now is he? Uh, six, six. Oh, hang on. That wasn't. That was it. That was two. 
one come on, come on, come on. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. Yeah, I didn't know that was going to be nine or eight. No, not for this kind of stuff. The Delta timings, not really for these kind of games. These weren't written with that kind of thing in mind. So, you could obviously scale everything by that if you wanted, but it throws all the timings out of it. Particularly for these things that need the kind of precise jumps. Um, you did the Delta timings and things slowed down, then you wouldn't always jump perfectly on blocks and stuff. So you're much better just to write it so that it just runs at that speed. Bloop. Okay. I think I need to put a delay in there, because I think that's too fast to, to nip across. Let's have a look at the game. Let's see, there's a big pause. Can't just zip across. There's there's always a pause. So I think I need a little delay in there before you finish moving. Hmm. I'll leave it for the moment. It's, it's not really that important just now, but I think we want a I haven't drawn crocodiles or anything, so they might take a bit of time to do. Okay, so we've updated that. Animate turtles, so let's do that next. So to do that, I want to do... A new one of these. Okay, now this is simply going to be uh, three one, isn't it? Three. No. Oh, we're not using it yet. Hang on. Um, room. Okay, and we will take away one of these and put in a new one. Now, in theory, it should be diving. Bloop. Now, again, okay, I'm not sure on the timing of this. And it looks to be about the same, doesn't it? Just kind of goes down and comes back up again. So. Um, um, I've not followed an awful lot of the, the new updates in Game Maker. I've really only just kind of getting back into it. Um, I mean, it's probably fine. I don't know. I've, mm, I, don't, so I don't really know. I'd need to go and spend a bit of time and see what the updates actually mean for Game Maker. So, yeah, I'm not sure yet. I mean, I don't really even use like sequences or anything yet, which were kind of getting done when I was a. Um, which are good for doing like intro sequences and stuff, but I've just never got a chance around to actually using them. So, um, I know they've added shaders for layers and stuff. And that was something we talked about back when we was, I was doing this. Um, you can actually do it manually if you want, just a start script and end script around the layer. You just kick it in, set a surface, and it would do the same thing. I'm assuming we're doing all that under the hood. So, I mean, it's probably all good. Um, so the team's revolved a bit, but it's still basically the same folk. Um, they know what they're doing. Alright, so I need to copy to two. And let's go with two. And let's drop him in there. Actually, yes, we should probably move that around a bit, shouldn't we? Just so slightly out of sequence. There we go. Now, the idea is when they're down and it's um, 
that frame where there's nothing there basically you don't want to do the collision on that so what we need to do is in the processing of that of these turtles um, I do need to see what the frames are so blah, 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 blah. so frame five if it's frame five there, there. frame five and there might be a little bit more you know it might be five and a half and stuff just to get the timing thing but we'll say it's just absolutely gone um then that's nice and put that in for you um no how do you get the frame of these things these days? Image index. It'll be four, zero to four, won't it? Um, nothing, one, two, three. Oh no, it's four. It's frame five with. So. So what I want to do is in all of the sprites, let's put this in. Now this inherits from log parent, doesn't it? Doesn't have in there and same for car it's because it's handy we'll stick it in there okay so what we need to do now is in all these things we need to do the inherited so that it executes the parent script first and then we can make changes if we want. I think I'd probably like it if it was inherited by default and then you're told it not to but me personal preference uh, one two three so I did that one Get inherited total why are you moving over there inherited inherited now, even though we're doing this, we're still doing the event editor because we might put other things in there and then we'll just override them, which is a bit better. Actually, I don't need that in there because that's how it's initialized. So we do want this and this one. Okay, what happened there? I pressed the key and something happened. Right, okay. Just close that window. Right. So, now that that's in all the objects, then what we do is... Um, Carpent. really need to test anything there because that's just pixel pixel collision so on the object movement so cloud the logs this is the one we want to change 
So it goes through all the logs and it escalates. So what we want to do is if no collision goes true, false because that's the case we're going to do it, then it'll do the collision. Otherwise, it'll ignore it. Idea being, once it goes to frame 5, sets that to be no collision, it won't actually do the collision, it'll just think you're hitting water. In theory. So let's see what that does. Let's find a... Now, that's going to be tricky because that's... Okay, that's still... It's maybe the frame that's running on. I'm not overly convinced that this is right. The image index thing's right. Let's... Um, Just dump this out and see what numbers I'm getting. Let's see the zero to one or actual count. All oh, right, okay. So I have to round it because it's fractions. That's fine. So let's try that, and I will need to do it on the second one as well. Basically, it's never exactly five, or it's exactly five for a very short amount of time. Okay. Blip, 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 blip. There we go. Now, if I jump on that at the moment when it's up, then I'm not checking when it goes down. So basically, if I'm on that object, I will need to check to see if the no collision goes up goes away, in which case I need to die as well. So, that is again in the player. So, if I'm moving, but I'm not moving. So if we're not locked to something, no collision was true then I'm locked into something the frame's gone away and I need to die and I'm going to pick point two so I know it's a different one so now when I jump on it it should be checking underneath to see if it's submerged Poof, and there you go and that's all the diving stuff is. Oh. Okay. So that works alright. I'll test the second one at the top as well just to be sure. Oh. I really need to get on it and how much I hate this game. <laughs> there we go. Right, so that's fine as well. Right, so that's all the diving stuff is. It's just hits a certain frame and then stops. So there's no rocket science in it. Okay. So that was nice and easy. Now what I want to do, let's have a look at our little... So we did that, and we did that, going off the edge of the screen. So basically you're on a log or something and it hits the edge. Um, I don't know if you can go off the edge of the screen while you're down here, so kind of do it yourself. Let's just find out. 
No. So it's only if you're carried off. Okay. That's easy enough. So again, player. <clears throat> Right, so we'll get rid of that for a moment just to maximize our space. Um, no. We will have to do a check on the movement to make sure you're not at the edge of the screen, um, just so you can't go off by accident. So that's the one. Dot three. Okay, so let's see what that does. We we'll need to check both sides, obviously, as well. Bloop. There you go, first one. So let's check this way. There we go. So now we just need to limit the player's movement so they can't take you off the edge of the screen. And up and down actually as well. I haven't actually tested down the way. I should, should really check that as well. Um, so player left. Less than, now what did I say 16, wasn't it? Roughly. We'll just give it a quick try. Anyway, yeah, um gonna see if we can start doing more. I've got a big list of uh games that I want to try. Oh, that's maybe a wee bit far. Um and that's not far enough. Okay. Sixteen. So I can probably validate with this. a bit weird. That wasn't the edge of the screen. Oh, so he's jumping on the lines. Oh, I got my map slightly out. Yes, yeah, so it should be there. So that should be the block there. And that would be 216, which is What's two, two, four, minus two, one, six, eight. Okay. So that should be. Um, I'm gonna, let me just. It should be on that block. One, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven. And I just need to. Die and see where it comes back. One, two, three, four, six. One, two, three, four, seven. So it's actually it starts that one. Okay. So let's get sixteen. Eight. 
And do that, and that's. That's it. Try that. It can only be a lot wrong. Okay, so that's wrong, and that one looks okay though. So let's do getting it. Hey, there we go. Now, I obviously have to stop from going down. I can't go any higher there because you'll die or win when you get to the top, so you don't have to check the top. I do have to check the bottom. So his start position and Y is 232. So down is less than 232. Okay. Uh, no, so I, I like having TVs and stuff on. I've got Sid music on in the background just now. There we go, that's fine. Um, I'm quite happy with things playing. I'll, usually during the day when I'm doing my day job, I've got YouTube and TV series and everything playing away. Usually stuff I've seen before um, because I know the story. I don't have to watch. I, I can listen and know what it's doing. Anything new, and I've got to focus on it. But all the all the old stuff I've watched, I can have that on all the time. Right, so that's diagonal off screen. Ooh, score. Okay, I don't actually know. Let me just get tab up and see if we can find anything about Frogger scoring. Every forward step scores ten points. Every forward step scores fifty points. Oh, what if you go back and forward just all the time? All right, no, it's just up to that point. So you can go down again, but you don't get any more points for it. Oh. Hey, they haven't checked that either. <laughs> right, okay, so it's just you remember the high point and then keep playing. Okay. So every four steps, ten points. Every four arriving homes, fifty points. Ten points all words for every unused half second of the game. All mines went off. I four home and get thousand points. That seems fairly easy. Okay, let's do that then, shall we? So for that, we're going to need to know it's the high point we were at. So it's actually the lowest. Point um, because you're going up the screen, so it's at zero. All right, so um, we want to do it when you stop. So that be moving. Okay, here. So if y is less than the high y, then let's make this a big, big old global. And did we have a script for globals? Is that globals? Yes, we did. Now we've got a score. Hurrah! Did we actually get around to initialising them? It's probably in the control, isn't it? That globals. There we go. Good. Right. So, I have to put some big marks in. As here. So we know that that gives you ten points. Um, and we also need to print the score. So what have we actually got at the moment? So we need to print up here. One, two, three, four, five. One up and high score. Okay. So for this we need to use our font. 
Now, like I said, I did um, make the font. So what I did to do that, to create this font is I basically went in here, copied off all the different characters that they had on these ones, and I did find some other ones, like the front end screen stuff also had some different characters and so on. So I was able to get most of the fonts, most of the characters, and then I just made the ones that were missing to something that I kind of looked okay. Um, so we've got a whole font uh, with no fancy characters, just the, the minor sign because obviously the game has this one dash up and that's kind of about it really. So that should give us everything we need. So to do that we need to make it. Um, now, it's usually about this time that I start having a, an initialization room so I can create things that are one-offs. So what we're going to do is create a new room. Uh, I can't just go create in the room and go, oh, that's what you want to create. R -r 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 room. Ah, uh, in it. That should be a uh, level zero. Alright, so in this one, I uh, need to copy these settings. 224, 256. 224, 256. Is that right? Or is it the other way about? What is that? Okay. Um, and the viewport. Now, because it's the first room, you've got to size everything, because that's how GameMaker makes its window size. It kind of looks at the view sizes and everything and goes, like, hey, we'll make the window this size. You can change it dynamically if you want to, um, but it's a bit of a faff. 224256. 4256. Um, I don't know how many. 968. Five, one, two, four. All right, so four. Okay. So I should just make an empty window and do nothing. It doesn't because now we have this room order, don't we? Where is that from? Room manager. So this dictates the order that rooms will be in um, and how they're organised. We used to have it down there, used to have to be the first room, but that was a faff. So they did add this. Not long ago, which makes life a lot easier. It means you can organise the rooms down at the bottom much more easily. So now we should do nothing. Ah, there we are. That's not big. Oh, I've not enabled the view. So you've got to enable viewport. Ah, make that one visible. There we go. Bing. Okay. So before we do that, I will duplicate that. Oops. And we'll make that the front end. And you'll notice I prefix all these with R, all the objects with O, and all the sprites with S. So it makes it very clear when you're looking at levels and stuff and, and code. That's a sprite, that's an object. You don't have to go, player. Okay, what am I loading the player with? Is that the object? Is that a room? Who knows? So you're prefixing your stuff with a letter that you know is, is a good idea. Okay, so now we've got that, we need to do a new controller. Ideally, what we want to do is just make the HUD the controller and then just make it persistent. Um, let's do that. Okay, and then in level zero, we'll just take this one away. And what we'll do with this is make it persistent. Now, what that does is when it's created, it just lasts forever. And that way you can have an object that can manage level transitions and um, set up variables and stuff from the very first room and always be around if you need it. So, okay. So you don't want to make it the HUD because I do have to print things. Let's keep it simple. Let's um, keep that as the HUD. We'll make it not 
We'll make that one not persistent, then we'll create a specific game flow controller. Just to keep things very clear. So create object or controller. Okay. Now if you remember when we were doing the Controller, we got a big old C on it. Okay, that was annoying. <laughs> Not that I'm a perfectionist or anything. Sorry, I don't care. Right, so we've got a controller. Um, now we shall stick that in there. We will make this one persistent. And then we will attach it to our front end. I'll take that my way. Good. Now, what this will do what was my globals called? Let's get my globals. Start game. Okay. So this is going to initialize. Um, all our general global. So this is on entry in the game, power up and so on. So font equals font and uh, I can never remember this these days. What's the font stuff? That's by X. That's the one. So I need to take the sprite that we're doing it with, which is sprite S font originally enough. And then we want a map string. So the map string See these kicking in. So, if somebody wants to extend this and put in lowercase fonts and do things, it's easier. So, map string proportional. Is that true or false, or is that yes? So, not proportional. Separate between each letter, zero. So, we now have a global. Again, prefixes are everything. They will tell you where everything's created. So that initializes the globals. Um, and that variable stays around for, that controller stays around for a while. Um, so what we can do now is then HUD. <clears throat> font and uh, where we're going to want to print this um, no I want this to be background uh, oh, that's the one can I still get it open yeah okay Four by one. <clears throat> Two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, what color is it? 
red. Now you will notice, or you maybe didn't notice, the font is yellow. Uh, yellow. The font is white. Um, now at the moment there is a background. Uh, the reason for that is just because it was easy. Actually what I want to do is change that to that. So that's using the colour replace. I'll take the current colour and then swap it. Right, so what we've got now is a font with an alpha background and because it's white we can then colour tint it to anything. So set colour red there. Now in theory oh we do have to do this. So the bit that was missing on this is Now that'll probably be the front end in a bit, but just now it's it's fine with that. So there we go. Okay, it's just kind of over the top. Things were not quite right. Let's print it down a little bit. Let's print it underneath and we'll see. Okay, so it's out by 16. That's interesting. Well, you're out by 16. Nothing. Eight. Oh, one, two. Snaps in the fourth. So nothing, 8, 16, 24, right, okay, so wildly out. Oh, there's a bit of a space. I've said no to proportional. Why are you making it a proportional font? Oh, I think I am um, 7 by 7. It should be 8 by 8. Image, resize all frames, 8, 8. Okay, try that again. There we go. Uh, that looks like it's out one, so can I then do that? And do resize of frames. Eight by eight. And move it to the side. Let's try that again. There we go. Bang on. Okay. So I just need to print the next one. And then we can get rid of those and move it up a bit. Um, so that would be... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. Eleven, you say. Okay. Bing! There we go. Right. So now what we want to do is to go to the background. Uh, there we go. Now we could print that as text as well if we really wanted to. Um, probably doesn't matter too much here. Just because, you know, we're kind of cheating and just getting stuff done as quick as we can. Um, and we're printing stuff anyway. I think. Is that just the time? The indicate the time. Okay. All right, so uh, eight, eight. So um, I'm not sure if you can do 
leaving zero printing on GameMaker. Can you do that? We'll just have to do it longhand. String format. String format be the thing we're after. Total number of decimal places include. Okay, so score all decimal places to include five. I'm not sure that's oops hang on, that's not gonna print anything. Not sure that's what we're gonna want. What's total oh that's so is that gonna be less, is it? Oh, if it still comes up with five zeros, then probably right. One zero. Eight. Except it's printing from the back, I think. Is that doing ten? Places the main number would be shown in space of zero match. Then it's this. Six. Based from somebody else, obviously. Okay, so that's getting the length of the string because that'll be the number of characters because it's whole takes that off and is repeating that zero and adding on the string at the end. Kind of long-winded, isn't it? But okay, it works. So, what the hey? Setting the number of my so the number it's just going up and up and up and up and up. So once it does that, gotta set it. Okay, 
Okay, so that part works. Oh, let's grey that like that. Colouring's not doing its job. <laughs> it really doesn't sound like that, does it? Mm. Okay. Doesn't matter. That's why I like the prefixes. You're not depending on the colour. Uh, Technically, they should have M's in front of them or something for being a member or something instead of a local. Um, so, what was the other one? So, every frog arriving safely home gives you 50 points. So, let's see. That was a, there was a win thing up here, wasn't there? Win box. It says play win. So, we can either make it in side the player win sprite on the create that it adds 50 points or we can be a bit more boring and just go well if you created one add 50 points i'd rather keep all the additions in here if possible um then 10 points are awarded for each unused half second of game time okay so this is where it gets more interesting time to get the the timer in Well, let's just check the other one first. Let's make sure we've got... Bloop! There you go. 160. So that's fine. Right, so timer. So to do the timer... Now, we know we're going at 60 frames a second. Speed FPS, there we go. <coughs> now, all we do is in the step, time comes down, and then when we draw, I'll take it from that and floor it. See if that gives us a number of arguments. What have we done? If I accidentally Interesting, why is that? It's a macro. So don't know if I want to have because hmm, that's really the distance. So let's keep the max time to that and then just do that manually. Um, that way all this kind of stuff just kind of works. And it's only this one time really that's that's the issue. Um, we will go back to the front end if it hits zero, so that's not an issue. Okay, so let's try that. Liking that. Oh, because I'm not using that yet. Still not liking that. And show 
debug message time. Okay, let's see what it's actually putting. Nan, okay. <laughs> it's coming from a nan. So what's that? Game speed FPS. That should be 60. Zero. What? <sighs> okay. I don't know why that's... That should really be set to whatever that is. to be set like yeah that should be set by default but to show speed fps but to show that should be set still zero why the hell are you still zero okay i'm not gonna bother with that If in doubt, I've ever figured that out, or the fixed it, whatever it was, because it should be zero, then I could just put the macro in instead. So, not the end of the world. Um, actually, that's not what I said. It is control. Here and then the play, no, controller step. I think my control key is going on me. Oh, that's, my, that's, that's just going to be T. Okay, try that. There we go. So now, when I get to the top, I can take on the fractions of a second, and for every half second, um, we can give you that score. So wherever the instance have got. Now, it's for every half second. So. Do by that is divide that by two first. Divide by two. Yeah, thirty half, half second. So, oh, for goodness' sake. Now it does reset to sixty as well, so we will need to do that. Bloop. Oh, that's going too high now. Um, that's in HUD. Get the speed the thing under you mo is moving at kind of adds to things. Bloop. There you go. Oh, I need to reset the high Y when you reset player. So that should be set to equals. Oh, I don't actually know. 
that way. So let's just remember it, shall we? Same with my new die. Otherwise you're not going to get that 10 points each time you step again. Bloop. Now I should get... There we go. Tell you what I haven't done. <laughs> that. <laughs> I need to detect against one of them. Um, I could kill... The start box that's there. So, for instance, destroy the start box, and then any collision to that would just kill you. What happens in the actual game? Um, hang on, I'm trying to find the game again. There we go. So, what happens in the game if you. That didn't let me go in. That's interesting. I wasn't able to jump. I'll have to print the time there that you got as well. Oh, for goodness sake. No, it doesn't. As soon as you're past it and you can hit that, then it does it. But it doesn't let you jump if if you're over it. Okay. But well, we'll deal with that later. That's that one for here. in there's a couple of ones of you you pick up those frog things that appear on there they're just random stuff and then they move about they're pretty straightforward um need to reset the time that's what it's doing so once you've um started then we need to do time reset okay. I'm gonna stick this in the globals. That's me putting down bookmarks so I can jump easily. So you can kind of jump back and forward without having to go looking for things. I think that was one of our one of my biggest mistakes when I was doing Game Maker was not saving bookmarks out. Um, before when I'd used them, and all the languages I'd used them before, um, they were all temporary and transitory. So when you quit and you came back in, you just place them again. But actually, the way Game Maker's windows work, because you're not just flicking through things, they could be all over the place. They are invaluable, and we should really have saved them. So, never mind. It's it's one of the things that when you actually come to use Game Maker, you um, a lot of the things you, you change your mind on. Um, so one of the reasons that I was upset that game that YoYo was wasn't allowed to make games anymore. It's because you, you want to eat your own dog food. It's actually really important. Okay, so we're doing reset. And some of this. So, 
we'll get that time and then the time will reset and you step it back at the start. Bloop, there you go. Time starts back. Now, high score. So, I don't know what the high score is by default on this. Zero or is it start at something? Please wait. Loading. Four six three zero. Did that happen to be my last score? It might have saved it. I'm going to set it to that because, you know, what the hey? For the moment, I won't. I'll leave it zero because I want to see it go up. So. What I want to do now is instead of doing score plus, I want to do uh, score 10. reason for that is because in here, oh, it's really nice getting actual variable and argument lists in. Um, instead of just argument zero, argument one, uh, that was a pain in the arse. Now, if G score is greater than G high score, then that means every time you go over it, it will just ramp up with you. And that's a good thing. Oh, it's not there, is that so? There we go. Okay, so every time the score goes up, if you go above the high score, it'll go up with you. Bloop. Okay. Right, so we're kind of running out of things now, aren't we? It's getting into that point where we start. You really want to start doing like title screens and stuff like that. Well, high, well, high score. There's two parts to it. There is a high score display screen. I doubt we'll get to that. Um, title screen, some kind of start to play would be good. I think that, that's the point we can kind of stop, just go right, we've done the majority of it, everything else is just kind of extra fluff really, um, but we could keep adding in some kind of level progression I think would be good, just just kind of show it. Yeah, so we'll do that, can't fill a spot now. I think um, like it's interesting that it's stops you jumping um, rather than just you know you die or something it just you can't hit up at that point it's only when it goes off that space so what I think it we need to do is when we're moving up is before we move up we want to test um, uh, what player went what was the box check test, test box test one box So we want to do test win box. So play win. No, we don't want to do that. Yeah, play win. We kind of want to have that as the same. 
Um, it's the same size as the wind box, and we could just test the collision to that instead of the wind box. Where's the player? Frog win. So he's a 16 by 16. The other one was 12 by 12, weren't we? Um, one box. 12 by 16. So what we want to do is make this Specify um, um, manual, that's the job. Eat so sixteen, twelve. So I want to two in. So that gives us the same size as the wind box. So now we should just be able to detect before we move, we just check with that because it's still a center point because uh, we just set that. So if it's colliding. And we don't. So that just means if we're going to, and we know it's going to be 16 because the moving blocks are 16. Um, I prefer to have a height of something in there, but I don't think. Uh, 16 by 16, okay, so that's. Right, get height. It's nicer using an actual size if possible. So it's just magic numbers. Okay. So in theory, that should stop us jumping in to some place that we've already filled. There we go. Hey. So I was pressing up there a lot. Wouldn't let me jump. And then we just go to the end. So that's just like the, the game. So that's fine. Now we need to do the you win. I think the original played some music. I don't actually have any music that I could put in. Um let's do let's do a of wind detection. And what we'll do is we'll just do a new level. Can't remember what the level is. <clears throat> We've actually got to beat the game. This may take some time. Might want to make a cup of tea. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, that's a con. Right, I'm going to start again because I'm going to need more lives than that. 
<clears throat> Remember I've got a whole load of other streams of games in a day from older ones I did um, up on my YouTube. So if you want to see some of them, or you want to see other ones, then there is a heap of them already done. Um, I did stream a remake Jetpack. I actually did that um, virtually the whole game um, in about six hours, including the Spectrum Color Clash, which was good fun. Uh, admittedly, that took more time than, than actually making the game. Pink. Okay, I'll finish that. Now what I want to do is pause it there. Just going to take a little screen grab. Yes, I know what I'm dealing with. Right, so move this back again. Um, okay, so the new level has four of these. three of these but slightly different spacing and it has two of these and it has three of these rest of it looks They might all be a bit faster. I'll, <laughs> I'll need to check. Um, everything else looks about the same. Well, there might only be one big log in the middle. There is. There is crocodiles as well, actually. But I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to take this log off. Um, and then one of these logs Ooh, that's sneaky These logs here occasionally One will go off and it'll come back on as a crocodile I'm not going to bother with that at the moment Basically what that means is when it's a crocodile the end of it's lethal Aside from that you can still jump on it um, to do that you would just detect that it's a crocodile and then basically not have a smaller binding box for that and then a bit at the end you would just ignore because you jump off the water you're dead anyway so you just shrink in the binding box for it when it's a crocodile it's, it's nothing complicated but I'm not going to bother with that for the moment um, now these ones are going faster um, so, we'll get to that in a minute. What you'd end up doing for that is doing some creation code. can't remember the order. Creation code happened before the instance code. I 
think so. So that things can be set. So we'll need to move a lot of the speeds into uh, some of the creation code so that we can set it in the level to go this thing's faster here, 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 from the actual level itself. For now, that will do. <coughs> so, level zero, once you've finished it, um, we need to... I know, we kind of pause as we do the game and then we'll do a little pause sequence just to give it a little bit of a change. I think that's all of the instances, isn't it? Yes. But that's not what I want, so... First time I made the game in assembly. Oh, a full game? I would have been about 17. I'd been doing assembly for years before that, doing lots of just fiddling, but never finished a game. First one I did was a plus four game called Freak Out, which was a breakout clone. Um, but, I mean, Back then, you just you'd start things, you make like scrollers and sprite engines and half a level, and then you get bored and you go into something else. So um, that would have been the first finished one. After that, it would have been Ballistics. That was my first commercial game for uh, DMA on the sixty-four. So. is if we win um, um, now there's two ways of this you can just move it off the top of the screen like with other just stick it off the top of the screen so you can't see it and we'll give it a Ten second counter. So we don't bother resetting it. So it's basically still up at that that top part. Um, Yeah, so we don't really care about resetting at the moment because when we move to another level, it'll all get kind of reset anyway. Um, so we just want to stick it out of the way, do a counter. Um, we'll make that counter minus one for the moment. And then. Got the next level. Let's see what happens. And it fails miserably. Why does that fail? When count is not set. I thought I'd just set it. When count. What are you talking about with us? Press type zero if when count is there. Oh. Line eight. 
Este. Pretty sure it's not. That spelt it funny or anything, have I? No? I'm pretty sure I've used that as well. <sighs> yeah, it's not it's not working that out very well. Why is that? It's in the crate event. Care about that, does it? No. Player step zero. Win count out and zero. Local variable. Why do you think it's a local? Did I have a var down there somewhere? Yes, I did. There we go. Now you're going to recognise that as being. In use. Oh. oh. Okay, well that's wind timer. Let's change that to wind timer because wind count is used before. Okay. He's still saying that's not in use. Yeah, just not those four going together. I need to separate them out a bit. Because that should be twos and twos, obviously. <laughs> it's always the hardest to get. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Right. Nope. Hey. Right, so. Okay. Okay, it's not quite what I was thinking of. Probably change that so I can just do a whole state of players going. Um, and I'll just, we can just stop him in his tracks basically. So, 
won't do any of this if, you use, if the player's won. Don't you want to do that? Don't you want to do that? Nope, nope, nope. So, basically, don't do nothing. <sighs> yeah, that old sucker. It's going to be a little nip over. Frog is an interesting game, kind of psychologically, because it's all about patience. It's an incredibly simple game if you're patient. It's that finger twitching that really kills you all the time. 100%. Okay, so there. Next level. Okay. So we'll have to change a lot of these speeds. Oh, there's only one log there. That's trickier. <laughs> and I didn't see which things were sinking. Uh, there might be more of them. Okay. That's kind of, that's the level progression, is that it's, yeah, you have to just set a few speeds, basically. Okay. Uh, so we read that one. Um, so we're doing this at the moment. We'll do is mm. now we can either let's move that one back just so it's out of range. We can either put the speeds into the level using creation code. Oh, why? No, there you go. So, what you can do is you can do creation code and then you can set up specific level variables for each one. Now, that's fine if they're all kind of individually different, but because they're kind of based on selections, so you know that row, then this row, and they're all different. So it's two, three, four, every layer's got its own object and they're all matching at speeds, they're not like they're overtaking anything. What we can do, just to make life a little easier, is when we're starting, is it just room? Can just do this. Um, now, what I will do just to test this in player, you will do key pressed, uh, letters, uh, W. Then we can just see what it looks like. So, all nice, change room, I don't see any difference. It's obviously going to break because there isn't another room. Um, okay, what one did I change? Turtle one. So let's. And 
before we do any further, let's take away that print for the... ...time, because that's just getting annoying. Okay. So, L1, three of them, it's fine. L2. Still going at the same speed. No, exactly what I expected. Uh, oh, idiot. There you go. So yeah, so those ones are double the speed, and the cars are double the speed. Um, I do need to do this one as well. So just four. Right. So, uh, next level, we speed up a bit, we need to do those cars, they speed up a bit. No, fast car. That's the do down, say point five. Level two, one. There you go. Everything gets a bit faster. So now there is another bit where time's running out or something, or your last lives, I don't know exactly. Um, it gets a bit faster as well. But uh, not quite sure on the rules on that. There's 30 seconds to guide each frog on. Thought it was 60. Okay. After five levels, it gets beautifully easier before getting progressively harder again. There's probably only five combinations of uh, the, the level layouts. And then it says, points is the maximum high score can be achieved. Well, it keeps going up when it gets the first five digits. Classy. <laughs> Seen anything about rules of how things speed up? So meh. Um, actually, really, it's just it's that. Um, it's not complicated. Okay, so let's change the timer to thirty just to be consistent, um, and then we'll look at. A very simple front end. I would probably want to make the bar twice as long for that reason. 
So that will be a HUD. Make the bar a bit longer actually, can't I? Display it in. There we go. So it goes down about 30 seconds. So let's do our front end. Let me just reset this game and see front end. I'm not going to do the whole intro sequence or anything. Um, folk can do that if they wish. Yeah, this thing. Really can't be bothered with that. <laughs> it's easy enough to do, it's just really boring. Interesting you could do the credits, can you? Um, how are we doing on time? Uh, oh, it's two hours exactly. Okay. So we'll get a basic front end in and then we'll call it done because it's you know it's the vast majority of the game. So that would be a nice All right, let me just copy that. I'll stick that into paint program. And then you can watch me draw stuff again. Okay. Okay. These are actually it's the font doubled in size by the by the looks of that big frogger along the top with a little drop shadow that appears to be purple. Really horrible. So that's basically yellow underneath, green on top. And a purple one. Jeez, they're really into their psychedelic colours, weren't they? So that's fairly easy to do. Um, let's just take that away. Don't need you. I can go to the font. And copy that. Right there. Go to the R. that. It's got a bit of space in it. It will balloon up when I add in more. We'll get the right size in a minute. So I want. Okay. 
Uh, another R. Okay. What we're going to do first is add a couple of layers um, and then make a yellow one and make a really bad purple one and then make green one except that purple one should be let's do that up here so that should be like that and then the purple one like that. Yep. See it there? It's like that kind of edge thing. It looks just like that, which is terrible. Now what I want to do is crop to selection and I resize Oops. Oh, no, I want scale image on percent. Whoa. Okay, that was it right. Resize. size. Percent. 200. Okay. Okay, so we will now do another controller, which is C front end. Can just dump sprites. Onto here. Interestingly it's got a, a black and blue kind of look to it. So what I might do is just make this part of Oh, it's interesting actually, that's not how it looks. Even though it's double lines, because it's been doubled. Oops, is it? It's more, oh, for goodness sake. It's more like that. So the G doesn't have this thing. It's kind of like that. And then a very thin edge.
could just merge them all into one layer, but <laughs> it might make some of the other stuff a bit trickier to do later. It's actually even weirder. It's like that, nah, it's very strange. Right, I'm just going to merge them down. So then I can just... Draw. So that looks okay. The same for all these ones. It's only a single pixel. It's very strange. Oh, the hours are actually different as well. That's interesting because it is different from the actual uh, normal one. So it's not exactly the same font. Same with the G's, they're slightly different. Okay, that looks that looks better. I see it there. You now it's horrible, glory. Okay, that'll do it. Um, now, what I might do create sizes this to four by seven. Actually, I might just copy that because that's got. Right, so what we'll do with this one is just um, basically. Take an approximate of that. 
the high scores and stuff are still displayed on the front end. That displays the last score, which sits us down in the ground, I have to say. Mm. And then I can take this. Right there. Let me just put another layer, just make life easier. I literally just clipped you down. I have to say. So it looks like it might just be an optical illusion. Four. Oh, about the same. Thirty something. I think my spacing is slightly different. That one seems to be a wee bit further spaced out. Um, let's just move it a little bit. This, that's not exactly perfect, is it? Oops. But. Six. Two. Meh, yeah, that'll do. Right. So now we have to print point table, 10 points, blah, 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 blah. That's it. It's basically copy this screen. So. Now, did they ever get back to doing text on this? We're always going to do text, but yeah. Apparently not. Okay. Matters not. Instances will be fine. Um, Do also have oh, I hate these new creates. I just want to do create sprite. Pain in the arse. Alright, I did also grab this. Which yeah, is a bit new. But what it should give me is 
So. Fifty-six by eighty. Fifty-six by eighty. Fine. Controller. No. Come on. Draw. Change the controller to do. Well, let's do our front end. Yeah. Right. So this should give us a. Oh, not that. I forgot that. Of copy that, let's move to the next front end. Let's go this for a moment. And yeah, I don't even want that. Is this really live? Or is it no, it is live at the moment. The recording will stay up, but it's live, 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 live. Oh, that's interesting. That should be in line with the F. Um, P. Okay, that's interesting. Meh, I don't really care just now. Right, and then 10 points. That is 16 by 104. to it. And hit so left right. For every frog. Frog? Frog. So that should be yellow. Yellow yellow. Tommy Mellow Yellow Red and one safely. Let's just do that so it's because I need to copy this. And then one to eight plus eight. Six, six, six. Um, skip for sixteen, six, forty six, fifty two, fifty two plus eight, sixty. Damn those throngs. Two, five, ohms. Let's right, see what it looks like. 
Is that should be down? Oh, okay, that's just saying that should be up a bit. On the grab screenshot, the black's just up there a wee bit. So, can do that, I suppose. Bottom. Um, plus bonus. Ten. Interesting, the Wikipedia said that every half second. Uh, actually, Jasper Carrot and Melly Yellow. <laughs> he was doing a gag, and the, the punchline was uh, they call me Melly Yellow. Um, so the background is actually dynamic in the, the Frogger game. Everything comes on and it starts printing up in sequence. So if you wanted to do that then you could put ifs at each point for the timer so that they come on in sequence um, and it's not just the screen comes up and that's it um, so technically the frogger logo should be coming up um, animated as well but i can't be bothered doing that it's also actually easier to position the text and the room editor doesn't actually have text i'd have to draw that out with a font Taking each character, so it's it's just easier. Oh, I forgot to move them down. Uh, Sixty plus eight, sixteen. Sixty six plus eight, four eighty four. But right now there was a Konami as well. It wasn't on that screen. That's in white. And interestingly, they have a copyright symbol. Well, I don't have in my font. So I will need to add a copyright symbol. Uh, font, 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 font. But that's easy enough. Just got the end. Blip, blip, blip. Uh, one diagonal. This was fairly standard. <laughs> the tricky part is getting that into here. I need the copyright symbol. <laughs> and a quick Google. And then cut and paste. Bloop. And then go back to for end. To copyright one two eighteen eighty one. Now that is one two three four four along uh, thirty-two forty eight. I one two three thirty-two down. I think. Um, Two, one, six. Oh, I changed the colour, but that looks in line. Lovely. Oops. And lastly. Credit. 
That's a good one. Do credit. I don't really care. <laughs> Cyan color. Well, that would be zero zero eighty eighty. Might have got the wrong way around. I always get the red and blue flipped. That brighter so. and that should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, eight plus eight, one, four, four, by eight. Ish. Hey, there we go. And now all I need to do is print the scores. Now I did have that scores in the HUD. So what I will do is just funnel that off into a function. Scrap, 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 scrap. score is not set up. But, 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 but. Okay, my bad. Hey, and there we go. Right. So that's the front end. Uh, what happens when you press So, when you insert a coin, you get this. You insert two coins, you get that. Um, I don't can be bothered doing that. <laughs> I try to just press a button to start. We're not an actual arcade. Um, so, I think what we'll do is just, if you press space, we'll start. Just for the sake of completing things. So I think if I was doing this I would have instead of credits just flash up press space. Um, what would be interesting for this is to do a simultaneous two player version um, where you're both kind of fighting each other to get you know the slots at the top. Um, and just the high score, so you put player two on the other side, then you basically just keep moving up and then do a different colour frog and it could be it still fills five up, so you're not going to both die, one's not going to die if one wins, it's just your score would be more, the score would be associated with whoever won that level. Um, and when one player dies, he just he stays off and the second player can carry on. Um, 
that could be interesting and good fun. You could do a kind of internet game with that. You could have kind of real time battles with um, with the frog. It's relatively easy again. You just make another player, colour them differently. Maybe make a kind of blue frog. And then when it goes up, a, a blue one appears. Um, and again, it would just be five fills and then you go. Um, and you just have the two scores. So basically, you compete for score. Um, and that's, you know, that's pretty easy. It'd be hard to do on the keyboard <laughs> um, to, to actually test it, but it, it's quite easy. And I know the game maker's got this new multiplayer thing where you can just find objects and send them, um, which I haven't done. But if you just send the second player over, um, or send the first player over and it becomes the second player on the other side, then you'll be able to kind of keep in sync and, and match them up and just run the game. And it'll be pretty straightforward. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this credit um, and then just in the middle Uh, two, two, four, two, two, four. And let me just work that out. Eight. So that's just, that shift is just divide by two, but it's an integer divide. You don't have to divide by two, then floor or anything like that. That just keeps it as an integer. Um, and that's just centering that text just up at the, off the bottom. Like that. Keeps it nicely centered. It's not character centered. You'll notice. Um, I don't know why. 224 should be a. Uh, Oh yeah, it's not character centered because it's an odd number of characters. So um, I don't have an exclamation mark, but if I added one, dum dum dum. So let's just say we added an exclamation mark. And it should probably be a double one because of the nature of it all. Um, and then. there then it should be fine there you go um, I'm not sure that that's still not centered twenty so that should split nicely so, hang on, two, three, four, five, five, eight. 28 4 minus 20 times 8 by 2 32 what am I missing now? Out there. Why is that not? Okay, now I'm curious. Oh, okay. No, I'm not. Hey, that's aligned. Right. It was 19 characters, so I was getting half a character, so it was being misaligned. And I couldn't count. Issue I'm finding with the font at all. Oh yeah, no, it's just because it was an odd number of characters. When you center that, it's done in pixels. So 19 times 8 leaves you with um, was it 32, 4, 8, 9 characters. And if you center that, it's four and a half characters. So it was offset. So 
you put in a, an even number of characters it splits and you get four characters on either side and then it splits nicely there. Okay, so I want to flash that because cause, cause I can. So flash, oops, let's get rid of the caps because I'm not shouting. Um, and let's do a half second, let's do a half second. Uh, actually let's do, yeah, let's do a half second and then and 30, then draw that. Okay. Hey, there you go, just like an arcade machine. So, press this and you'll start. So, key pressed, letters, space. Go to uh, room, go to uh, uh, level zero. Okay. Because I copied the controller to do this, what it's done is it's a persistent object. And I don't want it to be persistent, so we just kill that. There we go. Now all it needs to do is when you die, I want you to go back to that front end and then the circle shall be complete. Bloop. So there we want you to go pause, die. So that will be in layer. So here I need to reset and lives, 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 lives. All right, so this I don't want to do. End of game. I want to give it a pause. So we're going to use this wind timer. Or should we just do a new one? It's going to be the same thing, but let's do a fail timer. sequence I want to do y equals that thousand again just shove it above I don't care if it keeps on oh so that's not going to do it because it's above the return oh didn't like that <laughs> there we go yeah you could do um I'm not a huge fan of timelines, particularly for simple stuff. But if you've got, I mean, really, if you want to do any kind of animating stuff, sequences are probably the way to do it these days. So pause, nothing comes on. Back to front end. Right, so that's the whole kind of game sequence. You can obviously make it more complicated if you wanted. Um, you can do animations on the front end, things appear and you could do that whole Frogger intro sequence. Uh, you could pretend you're an arcade and do this ram fill. 
and do this whole intro thing if you really wanted to. Um, these kind of things aren't that complicated, you know, you just animate a frog, it comes along to position, stop. these things come up in sequence so I think you could do all that easily enough just with timers or sequences or something it wouldn't be wouldn't be hard um, and it shows you the high scores um, when you add to a score that's just a matter of you know when you finish the game actually it's just a matter of sorting in where you are in the score um, demos are interesting because all you really need to do is record your movements um, the kind of timing of them, so the frame they move and the, the the control you did. So you just have a sequence in the game. You go right, I'm recording, and you save it to a big array to go. Okay, on frame 312, I did up. On frame X, I did left. And then when the game plays, you just replay this sequencing. So when you get to frame 312, you do up, down, left, right, whatever. Um, and then the game will just, you know, all the animations and everything will just work. Because you're only simulating the controls, you're not going to do anything complicated. So it's fairly straightforward. So there you go. That's the core of Frogger in what, seven hours. We've got front end and everything as well. Um, probably spent like an hour doing graphics overall, which is always a faff. You know, most of the games there, we've got an extra level in, it will progress to something slightly faster. Um, there's apparently five different ones. It's, you know, not complicated. We've got a high score, we've got the timer. Haven't checked for the timer going down to zero, which we should do. Then, you know, if you, you got that, then you should die. Uh, step. So we don't want to do that, I want to do if it's. You know something, I should really just do that. And then we'll just check this in the player. even want to wait on the kill player for that some for some to happen. Um it depends how I mean because of the way we've done the input, you know you've got these things here where it checks the key. You can simply add in if you know left pressed and that would be a variable that you set to, to feed it in. Um, so when replaying back you would just set these variables, left press, right press, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then you would clear them again at the end of these so that, you know, next time around it wouldn't do anything. And then you would just advance the recording. So it's really easy to play back that kind of stuff as well. And then you get that demo sequence. Um, and you just have to make sure that the scores in the demo don't add and overwrite stuff. So it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's relatively straightforward. Um, I think that's it. I think we're, we're done. Um, 
Yeah. So what will happen, I suspect, is somebody had suggested that um, I think the diff you know, higher up Patreon levels will get access to the source to do stuff. But you can obviously see the code, follow, follow it along, type it in yourself, um, which you will learn more from, has to be said. But if you fancy taking it and doing stuff with it, then at some point I will get it up on uh, GitHub and then um, I might do a new level of Patreon that gets access to all the different Game in a Days that I've done. Um, I think I've got a 10 or so there that will stick up and then folk can take them and do what they want. You obviously can't release them as is because, you know, copyright graphics and levels and stuff. But if you change the graphics, you change the levels, you can do whatever you want with it because it's um, it's new code. They, they don't have, uh, you can't copyright or trademark a game design or the, the code is new. So as long as you change levels and graphics, you can do what you want with it. Um, I certainly don't care once, you know, if you're Patreon and you've contributed, then that's fine. So at some point we will do that um, and get it up there and then everybody can actually get access to the code and do what they want with it. Okay, so that is 2 hours 50 minutes, so that's 6 hours 50 minutes from scratch to here. Um, I'm just going to wait for that timer to go down and see what happens. Because <laughs> I didn't check that. Oh, the time has reset itself. Ah, it's going back to it. Man, you can fix that. That'll be fine. And that's it. Thank you for joining me. Um, I won't be streaming next week. Um, I'm away, so probably the week after that. Um, but by all means, uh, go into my Discord. Have a think of what game you would like to see um, and suggest it. I do have a list on my web page, which is lemmingsgame.com. Um, you can go and have a list there. I may pick a couple this time and then let my Patreons vote on which one they would like to see. Um, that could be entertaining. Um, yeah, and we'll take it from there. Um, okay, thank you and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye.